What is going on my dummies and welcome to the Dart Masters deck list. I know a lot of people are asking for this. I am super excited about this deck list. I've been testing it, um, coming up with some ideas for it, and I think I have something that's reasonable, not great, reasonable. This isn't something you take to a regionals or like a big qualifying tournament. This is something you take to locals and be like, hey, you want to play something fun? This is what you try to do. So... Without further ado, let me get on with the deck list and tell you why I'm playing certain things. I'm going to try to be as descriptive as possible with as little yawns as possible. So first up, we have one of of Upamon. Now, the only thing we can digivolve on two for Upamon is going to be the Gabumon. And the Gabumon, like, of course, we want to hard play him, but, like, we need Upamon for a reason. And I'll get to that reason whenever we get lower down on the list. But, like, we need the Upamon in the in the zone for options um and the gabumon is there like we can evolve onto the upamon and gain the draw power off of the gabumon if we have to um from upamon but that's not that's not entirely while we're playing it next up we have pagumon um whenever we attack we trash top security um now that's with that being said the um we have a purple core from like a rookie rush type build and that's because of Piedmon because Piedmon doesn't work with the other dart masters like you would assume he would um so we need to be able to get stuff into trash to be able to trigger certain abilities so we have Pagumon for that next up we have a four of of Gabumon Gabumon like I said is here to trigger our option cards to let us evolve on top of Upamon and be able to like draw extra cards off of the Upamon when we need to um, we're hoping the Upamon's on, like, toward the bottom. We're hoping it's not on the top. Uh, if you start getting inconsistencies and Upamon starts floating to the top of it, just take the Upamon out. Um, I haven't really seen an issue to where Upamon is a problem. Like, I normally get, like, two Pagumons and I get my trash to 10 where I need it before, like, I start getting stuff filled up in the trash. So, um, that, there's that. If you don't want to play the Upamon, don't play the Upamon. Uh... So Gabumon, draw on place, with really good card, and it triggers, uh, it shows that we have a blue card, so we can draw off of the, um, off of the playability or play our option cards. Next up, we have Entmon, um, three to play, zero to evolve, 1,000 DP. Um, on deletion, we're going to trash the top three cards of our deck. This is really good for, um, what we're trying to do with Piedmon and get stuff into the graveyard for Piedmon to trigger... Um, that's the only reason this Entmon is here. It helps with inconsistency issues. Um, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Uh, there's another reason he's in the deck. I'll, I'll get there when I get there. Um, next up, we have uh, Tapirmon. Uh, Tapirmon on deletion. We get to draw a card. Again, this is for consistency purposes. We're trying to be able to draw and get to the stuff that we need when we need it. Because we're not going to be digivolving a lot. Um, very little, if that. So uh, we want to be able to draw as much as possible. Next up, we have Vilemon. He's going to be our blocker for the deck. Uh, I thought about playing two of Bearmon. Um, I think that's its name, the uh, blue blocker from the starter. But I opted out of it to play Vilemon instead because I feel like Vilemon would be a better option here. Uh, if I had to play normally, two to evolve, 6,000 DP, or your normal generic blocker for now. Um, next up, we have Devimon in the deck. Devimon is very powerful. In my opinion, it's one of the more powerful cards for purple. Uh, six to play normally. We're normally e never going to play him for six. Uh, we're either going to Digivolve onto like an Entmon or a Tapirmon with him, um, or we're going to be milling him and getting him back with Piedmon kind of thing. But uh, he's got Retaliation, and he gives Retaliation. The giving Retaliation is never going to happen. We're never going to trigger that. So uh, he just has Retaliation for us right now. Uh, next up, we have a solo copy of Zudomon. This is 7 to play normally, 3 to evolve, 6,000 DP. We're never going to evolve onto him. We literally have him in here as an option card to draw two cards. Now, we can use Inheritable Skill off of Metal Siegemon if we want to evolve onto him, and there's reasons why we would. That's why we have a one of. Uh, like I said, there's cards in this deck. You'll, you'll, everything will come together when I get to the end of this, I promise. So, um, yeah, uh, just for, he's in here for the draw two option. That's also a body. One yawn. Hopefully no more. 
Uh, and we can use the on attacking ability to gain memory. Uh, next up, we have our Dark Masters. Now, of course, I'm not playing a four of them. I don't believe there's a, a reason to play a four of them because of how this deck runs. Now, over the next few sets, so set 1.5 and set uh, Greatest Victories or Greatest Powers, I don't remember the exact name of the set. Um, as sets come out, this deck changes tremendously. So if you want to see it, you need to comment and let me know. The more support I get on this Dark Masters and people wanting to see it, the more you're going to be able to get there. Uh, and I'll be able to get it as soon as possible. So uh, our Dark Masters, we're going to be playing these. These aren't Digivolutions, like I said. We're not trying to Digivolve into Metal Seedramon or Puppetmon. We are hard playing these. These are really big cards with really big effects. So let's get started with the first one, Machine Dramon. Uh, he has blocker, uh, 12 to play, 11,000 DP. He has blocker, so he slows down the game for us if he needs to. And then on play, we did digivolve two on two of our opponent's Digimon. That sets them back, that takes the top two cards off of two of our opponent's Digimon and puts them in the trash, as long as they don't go under level three. Um, next up, we have Metal Seedramon. Um, 11 to play normally, 10,000 DP. Uh, on play, we return two of our opponents level four lower Digimon to their hands, and we trash all the D Digivolution sources. And during our turn, where Machine Dramon had blocker, all of these have a ability that activates by themselves, or either a special ability or mechanic. Um, the Machine Dramon has during your turn, this Digimon can't be blocked by your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution sources. So we can use this to be very cheeky. We can get their blockers out of the way, or if they don't, ha if they have blockers with no evolution sources, we can just start swinging with a Metal Seedramon and not care about it. Uh, next up, we have Puppetmon. Um, he's arguably the better one. Two. I'm sorry. Um, but we can't really utilize him in the deck like we'd want to. That's why I'm saying in the next few sets, like, this deck changes and gets better, in my opinion. Um, so we have Puppetmon, 11 to play, 10,000 DP. Uh, on play, we suspend one of our opponent's Digimon. And during our opponent's next unsuspend phase, none of them become unsuspended. So, like, if we're playing an aggro deck or if they have a few cards and they're going to beat us, we can slow them down with Puppetmon and keep them from killing us. Uh, and then on attack, we gain a memory, which is really good. Uh, next up, we have Piedmon. Now, if you wanted to do it this way, I would say take one of those out and add a Metal Seedramon or add a Puppetmon. It's whatever you want to do. I have four of these because of a consistency issue. Um, so, like... Move the move this fourth one around if you want to, or stuff later on. There's other stuff that you can turn it into if you wanted to. But I like the four of, because when we do get the graveyard set up, every time we play a Piedmon, it becomes dangerous. He's our aggressor. The other three are more of our control factors. This is our aggressor, because if we get aggressive, we can start winning the game off of, uh, off of him. So he's 12 to play, 10,000 DP with retaliation. So uh, when we... Um, when we're deleted by an opponent's Digimon that we were battling, they get deleted as well. And then on play, uh, we can t select two level four lower purple Digimon. That's why we have the purple Rookie Rush, um, uh, Core, the Tapirmon, the Entmon, the Viomons, the Devimons. Um, we get to choose two of those and put them into play from our trash. Their on play skills don't activate, but if you look, um... We don't have any on plays on our um, purple. They're all on deletion, or they just have mechanics. So um, we don't have to worry about that. Moving forward, this is the reason for the deck. Now, we have Beelzemon. Beelzemon is in here. Uh, while we have 10 cards in our trash, uh, we can evolve it onto an Entmon. Like, I'm just playing the Beelzemons for funs because we can actually Kaiser Nails out the Entmon afterwards, so we get the Beelzemon, get the abilities, and then Kaiser Nails the Entmon out to have another thing that can attack. So that's always really cool to do. Um, but uh, on Digivolution, uh, when we Digivolve, we delete one of our opponents level four lowers, so we're destroying the blocker. Again, a blocker. Uh, next up, we have a one of a Vomnimon. This is only gonna be able to evolve on top of our Metal Seedramon. 
Um, so 6-2 evolve normally, 15,000 power. When we Digivolve, we did Leet something and of our opponents and all Digimon with the same exact name. Now, it's got to be the same exact name. It can't be like Metal Tyrannomon, Rust Tyrannomon, Tyrannomon. Like, no, they have to have the exact same name. Um, so if you're playing against Agumon Rookie Rush, then you're going to beat them. Um, and then the other ability, when we attack with him, we can unsuspend him by returning one of the level 6 Digivolutions to our hand. So that's really good because we can reuse the uh, Metal Seedramon, so we bounce it, reuse the Metal Seedramon to be able to bounce more stuff while we already deleted stuff. If you, if you catch what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to delete as many things as possible or to bounce or to de-digivolve. I'm trying to control what my opponent's capable of doing when they're doing it, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, next up, we have a four of a Millennium Mon, and this is why I have the four of a Piedmon and the four of a Machine Dramon, because we want to be able to go into Millennium Mon whenever we want to. So we go hard play, and then we go Millennium Mon. Deal with it. Uh, six to evolve on top of our Machine Dramon, our Beelzemon, or our um, Piedmon. Uh, on Digivolution, we return one of our opponent's Digimon to the bottom of their deck, and we trash all their evolution sources. So that's that's a plus, like it's a it's a destruction spell. On top of that, on Deletion, if this card had any Digivolution sources under it, we can put it back into play without paying any memory cost. So like, he's still a body after we kill him, he still comes back. Uh, next up, we have Kaiser Nails, and this is the thing that brings all the deck together. So Kaiser Nails... Forecasting cost option um, with a security effect to uh, activate the main effect. This is super important because sometimes we'll have a Millennium on and we don't have blockers. We can trigger this effect to get blockers. So basically, choose one of our Digivolution sources under a Digimon and put that Digimon into play without paying its cost. So for example, let's say our opponent has an aggro board, we have a Millennium on with a Piedmon up under it, and we have enough uh, Viomon in the graveyard. If we hit a Kaiser Nails, we can get the Piedmon out from under the Millennium on, put it into play, trigger that ability to get two Viomon from the um, trash to be able to block for us. Or we can use Omnimon to bounce two things from their hands. Um, we can use Machine Dramon off of the Millennium on to be able to digivolve stuff. Like, and then we have a big blocker on the battlefield. Just all kind of different ways. And like I said, this deck changes tremendously whenever the next set comes out because I'll have Alter S to play around with. Um, and then the set after that, there's Chaos Mon to play around with. So like, let me know what you guys want to see because I will keep doing what you guys want to see because I love your guys' support. I cannot stress that enough. I want you guys to see what you guys want to see. Um, like whatever decks you want, I will do what I can to build the best one I possibly can. Um, so yeah, uh, Kaiser Nail is the main focus of this deck. Uh, and finally we have a four of of Matt Ashida well, from the starter deck. The reason we're playing the starter deck one and not the other ones, the starter deck one does not cap us on memory. The starter deck one gives us memory if our opponent has no Digivolution sources under a card. So if we're controlling what our opponent's capable of doing and keep bouncing stuff, eventually they're going to play a card that doesn't have a Digivolution source. And when they do that, that's when we're going to start ramping up memory. So like, it might not seem like a lot, but over the course of three turns, two mats gives us six memory, which in turn makes it half the cost of all of our Dark Masters, or makes Millennium on or Omnimon free, or the Beelzemon, like, a negative two play or makes our Kaiser nails free like that's the whole reason we're doing it is just to just ramp on memory as much as possible but that is the deck this is the dark masters deck like I said there's some stuff that could be changed like I said if you don't want to play the Upamon take them out uh, there's no reason to play him you got the Goblin you have the match you have the Zudomon so you do have stuff to get to your blue source and plus like the Dark Masters themselves can control the game, at least the Machine Dramon, the Metal Sea Dramon, and the Puppet Mon can control the game until you get to what you need. And then you have the uh, the Entmons and the Pogumons and the Gabumons that cycle through your deck, and I guess Tapirmon. So like your level 3s and your level 2s will be able to cycle through and get you what you need. Um, so 
Uh, also, the Kaiser Nails, you can use that. You can evolve into Metal Seedramon when things start getting hairy and you need cards in your hand. You can evolve it on top of Zudomon and then use the Kaiser Nails to call it out to draw two after you swung, gained a memory off of the attacking ability, and then like it can't be blocked by anything without some. So like the deck is really good, uh, or not really good, it's uh, it's a eight. <laughs> but I know you guys wanna see one, so I'm trying to get you guys one. Um, but yeah, I know it's expensive, I'm sorry, and you don't have to use the full arts and stuff. I'm just using the arts that I like the most. I'm sure you guys would do the same. But uh, yeah, if you like the video, please guys, give me a like. Um, and subscribe. I have daily content, three videos coming out every week um, on deck techs. I'm about to start doing 1.5 decks and keep doing these fun little decks for set one, uh, 1.0. And then leave a comment. Let me know how you guys are feeling, how you guys are doing, what you guys want to see. I'm all about you guys. Like, be the community. Talk to me. I like to know what you guys think. But uh, in the meantime, I'll catch you all later. Peace.